Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's the podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today is a solo episode, kind of returning back to <laughs> tradition, if you will. Um, but today I kind of felt inspired by the recent video essays that we've had come out from, you know, the big one being H Bomber Guy, but Philosophy Tube. And a few others have done similar uh, video essays talking about, you know, plagiarism and, you know, copyrighted content, how to appropriately use another person's work in your, you know, in your own, in your own video essays or whatever you do. And so to kind of talk tangentially or, you know, in a related fashion to that, I figure out kind of throw my own hat into the mix and talk about, um, my own experience with uh, public domain work, using it in my, you know, in my podcast for the video section. By the way, if you only listen to my podcast um, through audio, I have now, you know, I have at least for a while done video podcasts. So, you know, if you haven't checked that out, I would highly recommend it. Gives you a fun new format to basically listen to my interviews or listen to me ramble about no nonsense topics or whatever but no um to mainly focus on you know my own experience using like public domain uh work uh the successes i've had with it i guess kind of tips for anybody that wants to use it uh for their own projects and um yeah just my overall experience are right. so for I'm not, I'm not sure how many of my listeners actually like need this explainer of what public domain work is in general. Um, it, the absolute layman's terms is that it's work that for one reason or another does not have a copyright associated with it. So you can just use it freely as you want to either just directly stream or to transform it if you want. Um, and at least with the context of this podcast, I mainly uh, utilize public domain films, but it covers all media. Like you obviously have like public domain literature, public domain um, music, all in the works, right? Um, and for it's it's different from country to country, but you know I live in the United States, and I believe the the broad general rule for public domain works is i i think the cutoff year is currently like 1928 1929 uh i, I think it was 1928 when i last checked but it might have gone up you know every year it like moves up a year um and uh like for example the latest update that we have a public domain was recently uh, metropolis was added which is like a you know very important film but i mean i'll get into some of the caveats with that as because it relates to other things but yeah for i i don't know if it's like all media in general but at least for movies it's like 1928 1929 is the cutoff year which unfortunately for those of you who follow film history doesn't give you a lot of films or at least not a lot of um it doesn't give you like a lot of full length feature films because obviously a lot of um that would mainly encompass a lot of like silent era um media that's been lost to time um and and things like that so unfortunately you're not really given that that's kind of like one of the difficulties with like lost media is that at its current state it doesn't like really give you too much to work with but it, it is it is sizable like um especially since there are caveats for uh certain films that like let's say came out after the cutoff year of like 1928 1929 or whatever but that for one reason or another did never had um a copyright properly filed uh the example i can give is if you're watching this as a video podcast, I'm streaming right now The Hitchhiker, which is um, the first uh, noir film directed by a woman. And uh, I, I, can't, I can't remember specifically why it doesn't, doesn't have a copyright. I don't know if it was like never filed or if it just uh, lapsed. But um, 
considering it's like cultural significance, it is uh, hosted by the Library of Congress. So you could just, uh, you know, watch this for free online through them. Or you, I, I think I picked up my version that I'm streaming here through Wikipedia. Um, so, uh, but that film came out in, but The Hitchhiker came out in 1956, so clearly past the cutoff date. So there are exceptions for if your film never had the copyright filed for one reason or another, um, or uh, if the copyright lapsed, there's, there's a whole bunch of different rules that could kind of make this uh, more complicated. And I think that kind of adds a bit of a difficulty to it, especially considering how there isn't, well, I can't say that. There are like a few good sources for like public domain films. Um, Obviously, there are like a few YouTube channels dedicated to hosting public domain films where uh, you could just watch them in full. There's also, um, I think, just a very basic uh, website for, uh, it's like publicdomainmovies.net where you could like pull these from. I think publicdomainmovies.net sources from the Internet Archive itself. So, you know, also the Internet Archive too. Um, and all these are great sources. The only issue that I sometimes arrive with is that, you know, because these aren't necessarily formalized lists, um, you're kind of up to the discretion of whoever curates, you know, these sites or these YouTube channels. So if they make a mistake and you take that work effectively, you know, that could hold you uh, liable. Well, yeah, I guess libel would be the right word. Liable for, you know, you know, copyright strikes if you're doing like YouTube content or anything else of that manner. Um not to say that again they don't do their research. I'm sure they're very thorough and, you know, uh if you want to be safe uh, again, you can mainly just stick to the cutoff year of 1928, but if you want to kind of branch out outside of that, you know, just kind of really make sure uh, that you know you that the film is in public domain uh, and but outside of like for myself um, mainly I use like public domain works again for like kind of the b-roll for these episodes but I have also used it as an inspiration for uh, some of the promo art that I do with George Isaac so, for example, my latest, uh, the latest promo art that uh, he put out uh, was inspired by the actual poster for The Hitchhiker. And if you pull up the poster for The Hitchhiker, you can see, like, the direct resemblance. Um, now, that that is an assumption. I don't know if, like, because it would be weird, right, for a film that's in the public domain for somehow, like, the movie poster isn't. Like, I mean, I, I guess it's not impossible, but I, I don't know why you would go out of your way to maintain a copyright for a movie poster if you're not going to do it for the film. Um, but I, I think, because again, that's another problem. Like, you know, the more abstract the media is, the harder it is to determine if it is public domain. Um, but I mean, hopefully it's not. I, I mean, I think granted, you know, with the how the promo art was made, it is transformative enough to where it shouldn't even be an issue, even if the work was copyrighted. But, you know, it's just, again, another thing you kind of have to consider when using public domain work, um, you know, it, either transforming it or using it uh, directly. Uh, one other unfortunate thing is that, um, and granted, I, I don't know if there's any easy solution to this problem necessarily, but uh, so far I've been talking about public domain in the context of U.S. law, but, you know, each country has its own public domain statutes and things like that, and that can lead into some difficult uh intersections in regards to you know inter, you know international use of media like uh, for example i wanted to try and find um you know public domain works from like uh japan 
for example, but I, I, I haven't been able to because, um, again, I just can't personally determine what is considered like public domain in Japan and how that translates to, uh, you know, U S copyright or what have you. Um, and that gets messy because, you know, you have like international companies that, you know, own these properties so they could be uh, distributed through one company in, you know, Japan and then distributed through another company in the United States. And like the U S distributor can have its own copyright on something, even though it might've, let's say lapsed with a Japanese company or what have you. Um, which is unfortunate, you know, because I would like to branch out more into the type of media that I use for my B-roll here, but I, I just had to play it safe. You know, you just can't really, like, risk these things, especially since, <laughs> admittedly, with my podcast, I know I don't, um, I guess YouTube doesn't really favor it, because obviously I don't think they really favor, like, podcast content over, you know, I guess, especially like my work, which, you know, sometimes is only for adults. Uh, you know, I try and be as conservative as I can be with like the age restriction for my content because I, I never like to restrict, um, you know, my guests language and things like that. So sometimes they're swearing and I have to just be safe. Um, but like it as an 18 over uh video which just tanks its views but um i think like um with public domain works well yeah i i guess kind of uh, addressing this too is that another I, I guess i would say issue with public domain works is also with the nature of re-releases so um for example the satirion collection they sometimes like to re-release old films and add it to, you know, the Satyrian collection so you can um, buy it through their website or I think they also have like a subscription plan or something. And they recently did uh, Metropolis. And in terms of the public domain, um, you can't use the remastered, if, if I'm remembering this right, you can't use the remaster that the Satyrian collection did of metropolis you have to strictly use like the like the older version right um and so that that can be unfortunate some people might find that kind of a dumb rule uh i'm i'm split on it you know because uh i guess you have to offer some type of incentive to like remaster public domain works because otherwise they'll they might just be lost at times so but, you know, I mean, it's effectively, like, basically you get copyright struck for... I mean, it's not fair. Like, I know the Satyrian co Collection does add a lot to their remasters outside of, like, just upscaling the movie. Um, you know, they, I think, add, like, they sometimes add in scenes and things like that. Um, but, you know, that, that is just another thing you have to keep in mind when working with uh public domain material um and this is also um not to mention outside the scope of uh creative common films which i have talked about not not on podcast pasta but on other appearances that i've done with other creators uh now creative commons i believe is kind of it, well it's not exactly the same so the way i would describe creative commons is that it is that um like let's say if i were to put out a video and i would have it under a creative commons license you can use like that video for the most part but there might be elements within that video that uh are that aren't that you can't use freely like let's say i use a song from like acdc well obviously that audio isn't in the you know isn't encompassed in the creative commons license for the video so you'd have to you know take that out mute it or what have you um and there are a few films in the uh creative commons license not too many though uh and granted i don't know if it's like its own database maybe i haven't just found them because of the sources 
I've looked at. Um, there is like one. I wish I could remember the name of it. Uh, let me try and see if I can find it real fast for you. It, it, it's like an Indian film. Um, that is like I think the biggest example of something in the Creative Commons. Uh, uh shoot, I'm messing this up. <laughs> uh creative commons um uh, oh well the creative commons does have its own website now that i am seeing here but uh i don't know if they yeah like with this resource i don't know if they specifically have like all their films listed uh creative commons films um Oh, uh, it's going to drive me nuts that I can't find this. Oh, uh, this is going to drive me nuts. Hold on. Uh, let me try one more source. Of like... Um... Main films. Uh... Well, unfortunately, I can't find it. But yeah, there is, um... One example of, uh, uh, God, I wish I could remember the name of it, but um, it, it is like an Indian film. It's kind of a document. It has like animated elements to it, but it's in the Creative Commons because uh, there is like some musical aspects that, you know, aren't in the copyright. So um, I guess for anyone wanting to, who's listening to this, who wants to, you know, encompass public domain works in their own, what they do, whether it's, you know, streaming or what have you, I guess um, the general tips I would have to advise is, uh, you know, do your research on whatever you want to pull. Don't just immediately assume because it's on, you know, a website dedicated to public domain works or, you know, these types of films that it is in the public domain look it up on the Wikipedia, try and see why it's in the public domain, make sure the version that you have specifically is in the public domain. Um, like, for example, uh, I think Caravan of Souls is another public domain film that uh, also had kind of a remaster and re-releases that aren't in the public domain. So you just have to kind of be careful about that. Um, and... That's pretty much it, I th I think. Um, I think uh, in terms of the Internet Archive, there's a lot of films listed there that are supposedly in the public domain. Like, I think, uh, or not in the public domain, that are just uh, posted on the Internet Archive that, uh, that are, that do have a copyright to them, but like it's very, like for example, you could find the original version, I think, of Star Wars that was like on the Laserdisc in the Internet Archive. And I think something like that is, you know, uh, still has the copyright like to it, but I think I've seen some sources say it's like public domain just because it is in the Internet Archive. So you want to be careful with instances like that too. Um, I guess, uh, in terms of the future of public domain, I know there's been like some talks about, uh, it kind of expanding it in different ways. Um, for me personally, the 1928 cutoff year is kind of uh, unfortunate. Um, like for me, I, I wonder if it'd be better for like, to push it more into like the 1930s because at that point you would get um i think more of like some more iconic like horror films like i think uh like dracula frankenstein came out around that time i, I can't remember exactly what specific years they came out um but like on the other hand i get how this is like more of a niche thing like you know um outside of hobbyists or like you know, people like myself, I don't think most people care about public domain works, um, which is kind of unfortunate, but, you know, I, I think that's just the nature of things. Uh, another topic that, like, kind of came, that came up associated with this is uh, there was some speculation that, well, I don't know if I would say speculation, 
but you know with the uh with the whole news stories that like batwoman and these other films weren't released because uh due to like to basically make them a tax write-off um you know they decided not to release them and just take the loss and some people were saying like hey if you do this uh, these films should be released to the public domain uh which is an interesting idea i mean I, i'd be biased in saying that i would kind of want this only because um you know it would give me more public domain movies to pull from but but with some caveats like i don't want any unreleased film to immediately go into the public domain because there's probably plenty of reasons why you don't want to necessarily do that you know there are like um because there's like a ton of reasons why a film might not necessarily be released you know either due to just a tumultuous production cycle or what have you i think the basic basic sorry the biggest example i have would be uh the thief and the cobbler ah, thief and the cobbler which had i think it took like over 10 years to make that film um but uh but i mean yeah i figured if you know uh, at the same time if like these films that are, are written off for tax purposes are never going to be released to the public at least in the commercial sense that yeah it would be nice to um at least have uh, a way for people to enjoy it in some way through public domain or otherwise I guess I don't know, like, can... I guess I'm not specific on the law, too, but I don't know if, like, if a film is written off for tax purposes, can it never be released? Or or how specifically that works. But um, it might not necessarily matter. There's, like, supposed rumors that um, at least the Batwoman movie has been completely wiped. So unless it's, like, one of the producers kept it it's like just gone uh i i hope that isn't the case but you know that's always kind of a worry with these uh situations um but i think that's gonna pretty much do it for me um that's basically just what i wanted to say about uh public domain works i hope this at least somewhat uh helped you if you're looking into you know working with these types of films or with this type of um material uh thanks so much for joining me today uh if you want to support the podcast you can do so in a number of different ways i have a patreon account for monthly donations uh there's different tiers and with each different tier you get different um like kind of goodies i think ones like a sweatshirt and, and other things like that but if you don't want to dedicate uh yourself to like a monthly subscription to podcast pasta i also have a ko-fi account for one-time donations ko-fi also lets you do uh reoccurring monthly but i would recommend the patreon more for that simply because you know you get like the rewards associated with each tier all this is linked on my twitter account at podcasting pasta Again, that's at Podcasting and Pasta, all one word. Uh, at the top of the profile, there is a Linktree profile or a Linktree, you know, link where you'll find like everything as well as, you know, other sites that I host my content on like YouTube and Anchor. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, and yeah, just uh, take care. Hopefully, um, I don't know if this will be the final episode for 2024. But if it is, have uh, happy holidays, and I hope that I can continue to bring you awesome content uh, in the near future. Bye.